Six months ago, the Nintendo Switch launched across the world. The system that unites handheld and home console into one has already surpassed a third of the Wii U's lifetime sales, and seems set to overtake it sooner rather than later, thanks to a strong first-year lineup including Zelda, Mario, Splatoon, and more. So this week seemed the right time to look back at what the Switch has accomplished, and look forward to what's still to come in 2017, 2018, and beyond. Since March 3rd, we've seen people play the Switch here, there, and everywhere. While the portability angle maybe hasn't been pushed as hard in advertising as it should be, gamers have embraced the possibilities, with a quick look at hashtag only on Switch on Twitter, showing people playing them at the seaside, on top of mountains, at weddings, and, well, pretty much anywhere. Wonder how long it'll be before someone plays it in space. Almost as impressive as the portability of the system has been its controllers, as the Joy-Cons have proved themselves to be a great control system. We all initially bought at the high price point and the connection issues some suffered, the time has shown they're the perfect pair. Want to play them like a traditional controller? You can. Want to have total flexibility of arm movement? You can. And want to have a console that supports multiplayer straight out of the box? Well, thanks to most titles supporting single Joy-Con play, you can. Having syncing for new controllers be as simple as clicking Joy-Cons into the Switch also makes it easy to borrow a friend's pair and be on your way to four or more player action. Boy, what a selection of titles you have. Even with no sign of Nintendo's flagship multiplayer brawler, the Switch offers an impressive lineup of titles geared for both cooperation and competition for a console still so young. ARMS is an impressive original fighter that rewards experimentation with your builds, as well as a control scheme that fits naturally with motion controls and breaks free of the familiar tropes of its genre counterparts. Splatoon 2 takes dull and dreary shooters and literally rains down colour upon them providing the bright, shooty bang experience that stands out for both its style and engaging gameplay, which has been expanded upon all the time with new weapons and maps. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe combines all of the content from the Wii U version, then turns the dial up to 11, with more items and more modes, including a totally revamped battle mode, bringing back all the best variants from the franchise's history. Super Bomb Man R is the first major outing for the Bomberman series in years. Snipper Clips and 1-2 Switch both showcase the Switch's capability for bite-sized multiplayer experiences. And Street Fighter is... well, Street Fighter. And sure, you could very reasonably point out the online infrastructure isn't quite there yet, with an app that doesn't even showcase your friends list, and no news on the return of Virtual Console, but in terms of the gameplay experiences, the Switch is a runaway success. And speaking of the Bombermans and the Street Fighters, third party support for the Switch is alive and well. It's not at the same level as the PlayStation 4 or Xbox One, and honestly, probably never will be, but it's a lot more pronounced than the Wii U, with developers and publishers who take the time and effort finding out they can shift a good number of units on the Switch, as well as being able to tout their game's newfound portability. Fate, Disgaea, Just Dance, Puyo Puyo Tetris, Minecraft, and of course, the just released and reviewing well collaboration with Ubisoft that is Mario Plus Rabbids. And there's plenty more where those came from on the horizon. That support isn't just at the physical retail level either. Indies too are finding a strong home in the Switch, evidenced by the snowballing amount of titles being added or announced for the system. In many ways, it's taken over the Vita's mantle as the go-to for classic downloadable gems. Take Kamiko, a small game with no marketing and little fanfare. It shifted over 100,000 units. Slipper Glyphs has done even better, selling in the region of half a million. A look at the eShop charts shows games that have been out for months still performing well too, like Overcooked and Shovel Knight. And a recent Nindy showcase proves there's plenty more to come, like the newest Super Meat Boy and No More Heroes games, alongside titles we already knew were on their way like the Advance Wars inspired Wargroove or cute 3D platformer Unbox. Of course, this would all mean little without a strong base of exclusive, single player titles and content, and with Nintendo's development teams converging as the 3DS enters its swan song period, they're certainly on the way. While Breath of the Wild has held down the fort almost alone for the launch window, at one point managing to outsell the system itself, the tail end of 2017 is ready to give individuals plenty of games to play. Obviously, there's Super Mario Odyssey, which looks set to merge the playstyles of the older, world-focused games and the newer, idea-focused ones, but there's also Fire Emblem Warriors, a Musou game featuring plenty of fan favourites from the modern era of FE, and Xenoblade Chronicles 2, the go-to choice for JRPG fans looking for something new in the back end of 2017, if it can make its release date. Zelda isn't letting up either, with the Champion's Ballad DLC pack adding a new dungeon and chunk of story focused around the heroes of yesteryear who took the Nintendo fandom by storm back in March. Casting our gaze further forward, 2018 already has some exciting prospects. E3 revealed we can expect new entries to the Yoshi and Kirby franchises, two series that have done a good job experimenting with new art styles and mechanics over the past few generations. 
Fire Emblem is set to be making a leap to the Switch soon, and it will be interesting to see what the series does with the improved power and memory of the Switch against the 3DS. Then there's Nintendo Switch Online, which will be launching in earnest, and its classic game selection could prove to be a key selling point, especially given the success of the NES and SNES Mini. Plus, we know Game Freak are hard at work on the 8th generation of Pocket Monsters, which would easily make for a huge Christmas title if it makes it out in the back half of 2018. Beyond that, who knows? It's been a while since we've seen a new mainline entry for the Animal Crossing series, and while we know AC is headed to mobile devices, the Switch seems the perfect place for a series that is at its best on portable devices. And uh, Mario Party or WarioWare seems fairly likely too, as a chance to use the experiments of games like 1-2-Switch on a more established series. And if we're talking party games, the world is waiting to find out what the future of the Super Smash Bros franchise is, be it a deluxe edition of the Wii U and 3DS versions, or an all new entry. And I've not even mentioned the one title we do know about, finally making its return after far too long, Metroid Prime 4. If I'm saying anything then, it's that the Switch has a bright future ahead of it. Not many Nintendo systems start off this strong, let alone maintain that momentum for the rest of their first year, and I think it's fair to say this could be the strongest year one software lineup of any Nintendo system, handheld or console. Certainly, after waning over the last five years or so, Nintendo seem to have won back a lot of their lapsed fans. As I mentioned before, with their development teams now focused on one system instead of split between two, they have a great shot at keeping a string of first party titles coming, from established series like Mario and Zelda to newer endeavours like ARMS or Splatoon. In short, if you wanted to return to form for Nintendo, the Switch represents that and then some, and there's never been a better time to jump back into Ninty's world. Which, I guess, brings this episode and this run of Saturday Morning Switch to an end. As we announced on the penultimate episode of the Party Chat Podcast, we're bringing Metro Remastered to a close after a good few years, and that includes Saturday Morning Switch. It's been a fun run, and I hope you've enjoyed the show as it's evolved since we started back in January. Rest assured though, I do have future plans, which may include bringing this back elsewhere in the future, and if that interests you, tune in to the final episode of the Party Chat Podcast this Wednesday, or follow me on Twitter, at SlazoKing, for updates. Until then, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all around. Sayonara everybody.